So in this lecture, I want to go over what are probably the simplest and most basic and obvious thing that computers know how to do, which is basic arithmetic. So you can open up R and you can go to its console terminal and you can just start typing in basic arithmetic operations. So if you want to add two numbers together, you can just use a plus. If you want to subtract two numbers, you can just use a minus. Uh, there's not a, a natural multiplication symbol on a, a keyboard. So, so in R, as most, most languages uses the asterisk as a multiplication symbol, um, and then it uses the, um, the slash as a, a division symbol. That one's actually kind of uh, seems quite natural. And then like in basic uh, elementary school math, math uh, you can use parentheses to change the order of operations with any, any mathematical operation. And, and you know, computers obey the same order of operations as, as you learned in basic arithmetic, you know, that multiplication and division come first uh, over addition and subtraction, and we can use uh, parentheses to change that. So you, know, you can just write down, if I want to do three times the, the sum of four plus five uh, you know, versus you know, three times four, do that, then add five. You can literally cut and paste that code right into R and it'll do that arithmetic. Now what makes the arithmetic in computers more powerful than just the ability to have you know, a calculator at your fingertips where you can write arithmetic down is this idea of variables. So one of the key differences between variables in computer science and programming versus variables in math, such as algebra, is that when you learned algebra, you would set up equations and you would solve for your variables. Uh, that's not the way that coding views variables. Vari coding views variables as storage. So essentially, computers have all this memory and we need some way of referencing things that are in memory. So we'll say, come up with a name, X, and X will be a pointer to some place in that computer's memory. So it's just giving a, a handy name for you and me and the other humans to recognize that this name is gonna point to that place in memory. So if I say, you know, Z equals five, that means somewhere in the computer, it's gonna store the number five and it's gonna associate the name Z with that. And this equal here is viewed as assignment. So we're assigning Z the value of five. Um, so now whenever you use Z, say in basic arithmetic, it'll go, oh, I see this Z and I go look up what Z is associated and Z is associated with five. So if I did Z plus one, it would tell me the answer is six. I can set you know, Y to six, and now I can do basic arithmetic, not just with, uh, with numbers, but I can do it with variables. So, um, you know, I can add Z plus Y and get 11. Or I can subtract uh, those variables. I can multiply variables. I can combine variables and, and constants. So the idea of constants is basically when you hard code in actual numbers as part of your arithmetic. Uh, but the nice part of the thing about using variables is that you can reuse code where the actual values pointed to may be changing. Um, so you can write a general solution um, to how you, how you do a, a specific bit of computation and then reuse that code you know, with different numbers. Um, again, uh, variables also recognize orders of operation. And the nice thing about variables also is that I can do one bit of arithmetic with one set of variables and then assign that to a new variable. So I can say, I'm gonna do Z divided by Y. <clears throat> and the answer that, to that problem, I'm gonna then store in X. Um, the other thing to remember about, uh, or to know about variables in code is that uh, R is gonna evaluate these things sequentially. So if I say uh, in one line, X equals Z divided by Y, and Z was five there, you know, I'll, I'll get the answer, you know, five sixth, X equals five sixth. If in the next line of code, I say Z equals three, that doesn't change X because 
you know, I did this calculation, I found the answer to it, and I stored it in memory and had to X point to that. You know, when I change something, if I change what Z now points to, Z now points to three, that doesn't change, go back, the code doesn't go back and look up what it did previously and update it. If you want those things to update, you have to write code in a way that updates those calculations uh, explicitly. Um, likewise, if I write, you know, out an equation that, you know, might look like an algebraic, you know, algebraic equation, it, you know, Z is not, uh, R is not going to solve that algebraic equation. It'll only do computation and then store results. The other thing that's powerful about computers and their ability to use variables to reference storage is that you're not limited to just a single name pointing to a single number. That would clearly get limiting pretty quickly. Like I said, you know, if you have a petabyte of storage, you can't come up with a petabyte of names for every single number. Um, so you might have what we have been seeing so far, the idea of a scalar, which is, you know, a, a, a variable that points to a single number. You can also have this concept of a vector. So in a vector, uh, you know, a, a name points to a whole, a whole row of numbers. And you use this square bracket notation to say where you need to access in that vector. So if I had this vector 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, x, and I had x point to that vector of the numbers 1 through 5, x1 says go to the first element in that uh, vector and tell me what that points to. So here x1 would point to 1, x2 would point to 2, x3 would point to 3. But if I had had this backwards, if I had the numbers 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, x1 would then point to 5 because that, I would have stored that in the first place. You can also set up not just vectors of numbers, you can kind of set up tables or matrices as well. So in a matrix, you know, I might now have a concept of rows and columns. And so here, again, I use the square bracket notation to look up things within that matrix. And so two here, this is the second row, th comma three means the third column. And so I go to the second row, third column, and x two, three would then point to this number six. Um, so we're a this is kind of now how we're able to think about storing larger amounts of memory. So, so a matrix might point to a whole table of data, or it might point to, you know, an image. And so you could look up, you know, what color do you see in, you know, the 27th row and the 58th column? And, you know, that some point in that image will be a pixel, and you, there's a number storing the value for that color. Um, Computers also allow this concept of vectors and matrices to be extended to higher dimensions. So I can create an array that has as, as many dimensions as I want. So I could have an array that point has, in this case, five dimensions, you know, the, the, the row, the column, you know, so on and so forth. And, and actually in environmental data, it's, it's really not hard to end up with this sort of high dimensional data. You know, so for example, if I had, you know, um, a whole stack of remote sensing images, I might have, uh, you know, a, a time dimension telling me where and you know, which image I want to look up, and then I might have an X, Y location, and then in that, then I might have attributes at that location, say red, green, and blue. Or I might have, you know, maybe running, you know, uh, a global atmospheric model where I might have time, X, Y, Z, and then multiple variables associated with a three-dimensional location. I might have you know, temperature, humidity, so on. So it's actually quite easy because we have a lot of two-dimensional and three-dimensional data and time series data in environmental sciences to actually you know, need these sort of higher level storage. Okay. <clears throat> 